Well, now it's time for us to wrap things up. We'll do the last gen talk on making a living and subsistence strategies. This is part seven, and we're really just going to summarize how the ways we make a living shape societies. When an environment provides all needed resources, populations can hunt and gather and stay small. Societies are more egalitarian, which means equal. There's less stratification. There's no inequality. And legal matters are non-existent as people can work matters out together and they have all the resources that they need and they share them equally, distributing them equally. Of course, we know that there are downsides to cultures like this. They're much more likely to be negatively impacted by the environment. And that's why human beings sought to create more stability and more security for their families and their communities. But as we've learned, as we've talked through and walked through the different subsistence strategy types and how we've made a living in developing more advanced, so-called advanced ways of making livings, we've also created social inequality because not everyone has had access and continues to have access to necessary resources. As we advance in knowledge and technology, and we put technology in quotes here because it's not just about things like your computer, your webcam, your cell phone, but also technology like learning how to make a fire, learning how to more consistently make a fire, learning how to get a, a, a horse to pull tools, creating those tools, creating radio, creating electricity, television, and even having an understanding of the ways that things work. When you learn about supply chain management and concepts like Six Sigma, these are all forms of technology. Today, we're creating more and more immunizations. That's also a form of technology. Having that knowledge and having the ability to implement it precisely as technology. So as we advance in technology and our knowledge, and need to defend territory and resources and information and desire to establish ownership and lineage emerges. Farming necessitates land ownership, which leads to the emergence of social classes and clear divisions of labor among men and women. We've seen that as we've walked our way through each of the subsistence strategy types. So, Horticulturalists developed this wonderful skill of farming so that they didn't have to move around so much and they could live longer. One thing we didn't talk about as we went through each of the subsistence types is the average age within each culture. And from each society, their average um, lifespan is longer all the way up through post-industrial where it is not uncommon for people to live in their 80s, 90s, and even past 100. Whereas with hunters and gatherers, the lifespan was expected to be in the late 20s to mid 30s for men and women. 30s was pretty common and also old. 40s was ancient. Horticulturalists and pastoralists lived a little bit longer. They had more security in developing the necessities that they needed. In um, agrarian societies, we began, especially among feudalists, to develop medicine. And so lifespan went into the 40s, so it wasn't uncommon to die in the 20s and 30s if there was a pandemic, which we're experiencing today. But also um, basic things like antibiotics had not yet been created. And also warfare was much more common and labor was much more likely to lead to death. In industrialization, we didn't have to go out and do as many challenging jobs, though there was still war, we saw our life expectancy increase significantly for men and women in industrialized societies, mostly because of the, the advancement in technology and medicine. And also we weren't required for all of our work to be so painstaking. So industrial eras saw 50s, 60s, and 70s for ad average lifespan. And then as we get into post-industrial era, most of us who are born in the United States can expect to live in our 70s if we're men and our 80s if we're women. And those ages that we can expect to live to increase as we grow older and maintain a good health. It is not uncommon for us to imagine that we might live to be 100 years old. So because of farming and land ownership and stability, those things are possible. But they also created inequities between men and women and they created social castes, social classes, and social inequality that we're experiencing every day, still today, even our post-industrial societies. 
Industrialization fostered work specialization and advanced education, leading to increased class conflict. Now there's not just one sort of class in the middle, but there are multiple, depending on your layers of degrees and types of jobs in which you could obtain. Specialization of work also leads to inequality as not all members of a community will have the same skills or access to resources, including access to the education needed to develop the knowledge and skills to engage in higher paying jobs. Developing a surplus creates a need for cash versus trade and barter. So also as we've industrialized, we've become less connected to what it is that we're actually trading on. It's just a coin or something that passes through the air or the internet from one place to another, rather than something that we harvested ourselves and then traded with one person from one person to another. So there's a more disconnectedness to our um, wealth, our surplus, to our income. Also, as we have a surplus, we really can't carry the things that we harvest around to trade. So we've had no choice really but to develop currency or coin or money. The age of information and service industries levels the playing field as work is allocated based on skill. So if you have the ability to acquire the knowledge, information, and skill, you have the ability to sort of determine your future job to some extent. We know that there are inequities that get in the way of that. Not everyone has the same opportunity, even if they have the same skills, but there is the promise of that opportunity. Also, mass production and communication that come from an information service industry increase consumerism, which means they increase the likelihood that we want to buy, purchase, have, and consume more. And it seems sort of contagious in which we all want to buy, produce, and consume more and sort of measure our worth compared to our friends, our neighbors, and others rather than whether or not we have the things that we actually need. Post-industrialization leads to global inequality versus more localized inequality. International conflict becomes more prominent than internal conflict. So what we know is that as we have evolved, while we've become more skilled and more able to have and do more, including leisure in post-industrial societies, social inequality has become more and more profound and we've seen more and more layers develop, all because of the way that we subsist or make a living.